Normally we don't get political on Game Gorgon. But today we're getting political as f Hi everybody, welcome to Game Gorgon. My name is Krug. I'm Indigo. Today we're here to talk to you about violence in video games and why the government should f stop trying to make that a thing. <laughs> been going on for way too long for this to still be a conversation. Agreed. So just recently, the President of the United States decided to have a meeting with a group of executives as well as lawmakers and lobbyists uh, to discuss violence in video games because as I guess it's a reaction to the Parkland shooting. Mm -hmm. Look, a lot of this is going to be a lot of information, a lot of data, a lot of it's going to be opinion. Uh, and yeah, that's what laws and politics are. It's yeah. how people think they should be governed. So take it with whatever grain of salt you're willing to take it, uh, but we're not apologizing for saying it. No, not at all. We don't understand exactly what the point of the meeting was, uh, but my personal opinion of it is that it's just a distraction. Yeah, it was a, a closed door meeting, so we couldn't really hear exactly what the details were, uh, but it's very clear what they were discussing and why it doesn't make any difference what exactly they discussed because there's already research showing that it's a fruitless conversation, the, the whole violence in video games thing. The president decided that that playing a montage of video game violence oh, so stupid. was the way to open it up. And he was quoted as saying, isn't this violence? This is pretty violent. Like Case closed. Science done. Yeah, That's all right? you need. Uh, it, it was the dumbest thing. Well, and, and you pointed out something really stupid about the way they released that content. Okay, there's there's two really dumb things. One, the, the montage that they made wasn't a montage of just gameplay footage. They actually went online and stole footage from other YouTubers and put it, it together as a mashup. And left all of their bread to got it, which was really funny to me. Watermarks, everything. So you can go to these YouTubers and now see them. The dumb- Although, I will take a minute to say that those YouTubers are probably super into the idea that oh, they left their bread to got yeah. it. <laughs> the other really, really dumb thing about this entire thing is the fact that they turned around and took that montage that they're pushing to say, look, this is causing violence. This is the reason we have mass shootings mm -hmm. is because of violence and desensitization. So we're gonna put this montage together and put it on YouTube. Just give it to the public. We're gonna make a platform like the White House YouTube page <laughs> and, and just give it to you. It, it was the White House YouTube page, like the official White House YouTube page. There's no data presented. Nope. There's no information. There's no opinions presented. It's just the violence. And yeah, the video just... titled Violence in Video Games and that's it. In the description, there's nothing. Like there's not even information about it, just that here's a video. And then once that video went viral and got around 600,000 views, uh, they decided to then unlist the video. It's not, it's still available, mind you. Yes, it's just Everybody unlisted. has the link, but now it's unlisted. Uh, I think at the time of us recording this, it's sitting at 1.3 million views. Before we get into the studies, I would just like to remind you guys that Correlation and causation are two very completely different things. That's true. Correlation just implies that two things go together. It doesn't mean that one thing causes the other. As most of us that are probably watching this all agree that violence in video games does not actually cause us to be violent. Preach. But let's look at some studies. So just as of January of this year, the University of York had this to say. In a series of experiments with more than 3,000 participants, the team demonstrated that video game concepts do not prime players to behave in certain ways and that increases the realism of violence video games does not necessarily increase aggressiveness in game players. When they say priming, they're referring to the idea that Seeing something like violence, for example, in a video game makes that behavior easier to replicate in real life. And it doesn't just apply to violence, it also applies to stuff like gambling and maybe positive effects like asking someone out on a date. If you do it in a video game, it might prime you to be able to do it in real life. There's also a study by the SEA that shows that after a video game's released, violent crime actually tends to go down. And taking our own medicine here, that's not necessarily causation, right? It's not necessarily that violence in video games reduces violent crime, but it does show that there isn't a positive relationship between those two things, right? You'd expect there to be some sort of positive relationship. Well, and not it, only that, it's it, lacking. It, it doesn't also confirm any long-term use. It's only it's sure? only short-term yeah, that yeah. whenever a new violent video game comes out that violence drops, which means that, I mean, which could mean that there is a positive outlet for people that would 
otherwise be committing violence, they can instead do it virtually. Mm -hmm. We also have a quote from Christopher Fergus, who's been working on this topic for a long time. This is what he had to say about it. Speaking as a researcher who has studied violent video games for almost 15 years, I can state that there is no evidence to support these claims that violent media and real world violence are connected. As far back as 2011, the US Supreme Court ruled that research did not find a clear connection between violent video games and aggressive behavior. Criminologists who study mass shootings specifically refer to those sorts of connections as a myth. Amen. At the very least, the positive thing that we can say that came out of this is this quote. Because the fact that the people that are doing the law enforcement for these sorts of things, they know, they like inherently understand the fact that this is like nonsense. That's very, very hopeful for me. And then the last little bit from Christopher, it, he talks about uh, moral panic which mm -hmm. is a constant that we kind of live in in the U.S. From the 1950s that comic books were causing problems. Mm -hmm. Rock and roll was causing drug use. Drug use, sex, and Satanism, dang, actually. Dang. Yeah. Maybe and I then, should read more comics or <laughs> listen to more rock and roll. And then uh, in the uh, 1990s and now into the 2000s, violent video games causing some sort mm -hmm. of problem. Now, this is where we're kind of going to stop giving you facts and give you just opinions, yep. which is this is just a complete waste of time. This is. meeting is literally just to get us focused on the fact that we're talking about violent video games. And I think it's important that we don't do that. We need to ignore this last meeting, say, I, great, you had it. Let's talk about the real problem. Let's let's try to figure out what what was really causing these mass shootings. What's really causing these problems? Focus on the real issue and not the show that's being put on in front of the real issue. Absolutely, this is this is the dumbest thing ever. Stop trying to distract us and let's solve some problems. So instead of our usual, which is go on to the comments and and do some random thing. We're actually, once you go down into the description, we're gonna link a video that uh, an artist friend of ours, uh, uh, Taniguchi, ha actually created. He didn't create, he drew, uh, and it's animated. It's, right? it's animated, and yeah. it's really great, and it's about gun violence in the US, and some, some really fun ways to solve it using cute cats. It's actually a pretty interesting analogy that I think might help a couple people understand uh, the positions that people like Indigo and I have on gun violence. Uh, and also, Taniguchi is a really great artist, so you should definitely check out his work. Uh, and this is a great place to start. Absolutely. So, uh, until next time, guys, my name is Indigo. You can reach me on Twitter at IndigoQT. I'm Krug. You can get me at KrugQT on Twitter. You can also reach both of us at underscore QTimes on Twitter. And if you want to reach out to Taniguchi, his Twitter is going to be in the description, too. Uh, we've been Game Gorgon. We'll see you guys tomorrow.